JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for September the 8th. I am Harlamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, uh, the US dollar traded higher against all the other major currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session Wednesday. It gained the most, it gained the most versus CAT, CHF and AUD in that order, while it act out the least gains versus the Euro and uh, the New Zealand dollar. Now the strengthening of the US dollar and the weakening of the risk linked uh, Looney and Aussie suggest uh, that uh, markets may have traded in a risk on, in a risk of uh, fashion excuse me, in a risk of fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the weakening of the CHF and the fact that the Kiwi lost uh, the least ground uh, point otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU and US indices traded in the red, with the only exceptions being Spain's IBEX uh, 35 and Wall Street's uh, NASDAQ, which gained somewhat. The soft appetite rolled over into the Asian session today as well. Although Japan's Nikkei kept drifting north following uh, Prime Minister um, Suga's, decision, Suga's decision on Friday to step down, China's Shanghai Composite, Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South, Korea, and South Korea's KOSPI all uh, slid. Now, with, uh, with uh, no clear catalyst behind the pullback, we guess that investors may have adopted a cautious stance as we get closer to the ECB meeting scheduled for tomorrow. With the economic recovery gathering pace in the Eurozone and inflation accelerating to a rate not seen in the past decade in August, some officials believe that they should uh, consider gradually scaling back their programs, especially uh, the, per, uh, the Pandemic Emergency Purchase Program, called PEP. Thus, it will be interesting to see whether we will get uh, a tapering decision this week or not. They may not rush into any final decision at this uh, gathering, as they may prefer to wait for a while uh, more, for a while more to see what happens with the pandemic and its new mutation after the summer. But uh, even if they do decide to scale back their pace of monthly PEP uh, purchases at this gathering, they may compensate by making more purchases through other schemes. Now, as for today, ahead of the ECB, uh, another central bank is scheduled to decide on monetary policy, and this is the Bank of Canada. Last time, Canadian policymakers appeared less hoggish than expected, saying that they continue to see the output gap closing in the second half of 2022, which suggests that their expectations over when they may start raising interest rates have not come forth. What's more, both the headline and core Canadian inflation rates for July declined, the employment report for the month uh, fell short of its own forecasts, and the G and, uh, GDP data for the second quarter revealed a contraction. So all this adds uh, credence to the bank's view and raises questions as to whether officials will appear uh, more dovish this week. As uh, for our view, uh, we don't expect any policy changes or bold uh, statements at this gathering as on September 20th, the nation's federal elections are planned. What's more, this will be one of the bank's uh, smaller meetings without any updated, updated economic projections, neither a press conference by the bank's governor. 
Such a gathering will take place in October with market participants expecting to see whether the bank will announce another, uh, another tapering uh, step. However, with the data coming on the soft side, this may not be the case and we may get close uh, on that at today's gathering. The Canadian dollar was in a recovery mode from August 20th until yesterday, mainly driven by the weakening uh, US dollar and the recovery in oil prices. However, with oil prices correcting lower in the end of last week and the US dollar rebounding yesterday, the supportive factors may be off the table for a while, and this was evident by the fact that the Looney was found as the main loser among the majors today. Thus, clues that the bank may decide, uh, excuse me, clues that the bank may delay additional tapering in October could encourage some more uh, Looney selling. Now, as for the rest of today's events, the only major data point on the economic agenda is the weekly American uh, Petroleum Institute report on crude oil inventories, but as it is always the case, no forecast is uh, available. We do, however, have several speakers, including New York Fed President John Williams and DCMB Supervisory Board Member Elizabeth McCall. We, we will also get to hear from Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey, who is scheduled to testify on the latest quarterly inflation report. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So bye. Have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.